Hey, how are you doing? So uh, this is the, the next one. We're ready to start our project. Uh, we've got our template set up. Uh, we want to open up a new project and, and get started and uh, start to enter some tasks or activities uh, into uh, that project. So I've got Microsoft Project open. We're, we're going to jump right in. Uh, you see the, you know, the, the basic templates that I have uh, established. So I'm just going to choose the tutorial template, which is the one that we uh, uh, finished uh, earlier today. And I'm going to double click it and I'm going to get a new project based on that template. So I'm going to get the benefit of all of those changes. And we can see little things like new tasks are auto scheduled rather than manually scheduled and we have their grid lines and, and everything all set up. So before we start entering tasks, the first thing we want to do is to consider the fundamental project information and make sure that it is appropriate and ready to start. And so if we go to the project task, and we can open up project information. This is where we're going to see most of it. So I'll just put that in the middle of the screen. And so right off the bat, you the start date of the project. And this can be particularly uh, important. I mean, we're planning to do this project probably sometime in the future. And so we want to choose a date where the project is going to start. Now we can change it again later, so it's not locked in, but we want to make sure that the start date is uh, chosen. It gives you the current date. Uh, status date, um, so that's because I chose a status date on the template. Uh, we're going to choose a status date when we go to do status updates, so that's not that important. Uh, but choosing a calendar is appropriate. Now we have three typical ca calendars in this particular uh, template or available uh, within this template. Uh, we have a 24 hour calendar, you're working 24 hours a day. Uh, you have a, a night shift calendar and the standard calendar and the standard calendar is based on work weeks, Monday to Friday, eight hours per day, uh, nine to five, I believe it is. Uh, so so uh, you want to get that correct. You, you want to make any changes to the calendar. and We'll do a, a separate uh, video on how to adjust the calendar. It's probably one of the more, I don't know, I find a little bit obtuse uh, tools or methods uh, within Microsoft Project, but uh, you know, once you figure it out, you can kind of struggle through it, but we'll do a separate tutorial on that. But you do want to make sure that you're choosing a calendar that reflects the, f you know, the, 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 the plan that you're going to be moving forward to. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind when you're choosing a calendar is that Microsoft Project, despite what it might display, works in hours. And so the calendar interprets how many hours are in each day and when those hours are and you know that type of thing. So it becomes rather important that you get it correct. Uh, so for now, we're just gonna work off the standard calendar. So we'll choose that and we'll say, okay. And like I say, you wanna get that fundamental project information selected and correct before we start entering tasks. So we have our summary task is showing and there's a number of different ways to do just about anything in uh, Microsoft Project. It's a database after all. And so, you know, you, you can bring up information from that database in dialog boxes, in sheets, in graphs, and everything else. And when you make changes, they're saved back to the database. So, so for everything you want to do, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And so we're just going to go over a couple of the basics. Now, the obvious one is simply to type them in. And so if we go up to our first task and we choose it, so, so we're going to do a bathroom renovation as our sample uh, project as we go through these tutorials. And so the first thing we want to do is to do some planning. So we're going to start there and we've already got our idea. So we just really need to finalize the plan and uh, to do that. Now you notice that they're all showing up as critical because they're starting on the first day and there's you know, uh, because of the dependencies, they're all going to be critical to start with. But that's reflective of those template choices that we made in the first instance. And we can just go on before we can get started. We need to demolish what is there and ultimately and I'm doing this here because I, I want to actually categorize and then, uh, you know, let's say we start our rough construction and within rough construction, we're going to do stud walls. I'll just hit enter. It goes down rough in plumbing. 
And then we're going to rough in our electrical. Rough in our HVAC. And finally have some inspections before we go in to start closing our walls. Now, while I plan to do this and outline them, so I have some of those summary tasks, I haven't actually incorporated that. So for example, under planning, finalized plan is a single task. If I go back to tasks, I can choose to indent finalized plan, which means that it belongs to the planning group, if you will. And then for the demolition, same thing, we're going to indent it. It belongs to demolition. So you could have a multitude of tasks here. And where we really see that come through is under rough construction, when I indent it, they're all going to belong to rough construction. Now, we, we're just gonna carry on. We, we've got a, about 22 total tasks, including summary tasks uh, to put in. Uh, but I wanna show you another way that you can enter tasks. So I think working in Excel makes a great deal of sense when it comes to amassing your work breakdown structure, developing your work breakdown structure, getting all of the information that goes into estimating for each of those tasks, whether it's resource estimating uh, or time estimating. I think Excel is a great platform for that kind of thing uh, because it allows you to do a lot of things. So here's this project done out uh, in Microsoft Excel and we see our, our tasks are listed here. Uh, and then I use the power of Excel to basically do a PERT calculation. Now you can do this in Microsoft Project with some limitations and I'll show you how to do that on a separate video. I'll throw a link uh, either uh, up here or, or down below in the information so that you can uh, go look for that when you want to. Uh, but it's really, really easy to do in Excel. And then I can go on and do variance analysis for the time estimates so that I can get a probability assessment as to how long, it, you know, whether it's gonna be finished by a certain date or not, uh, and predecessors and resources and cost estimating. And it's really, really easy to do in Excel. So what's really nice is it's also very easy to take the information that's here and transfer it directly into uh, Microsoft Project. So we got down to utilities inspection. So I'm just going to go down here and copy control C uh, to copy, pop back over to project. I'm already there. I'm going to choose control V to paste it. And I have all of my uh, tasks in there. And you see it's numbering them all here. So what we have to do, it doesn't interpret the indents. So we just need to indent that to make them subordinate tasks and indent these to make them uh, subordinate tasks. And we have all of our projects. Now, because we haven't entered in any durations, they're all showing up as one day question mark just by default. And so we'll start to enter into uh, enter those durations. So for summary tasks, we don't enter the durations. Those are calculated by the program. So we want to go down to our first task and it's finalized plan. And so obviously, whether you're doing a bottom-up uh, estimating process or whether you're doing the estimate yourself, you're, you're going to have to arrive uh, somehow at, at an estimate for the duration. And we can put that in here in a number of different ways. So, you know, we could say it's going to take a day to finalize the plan. Sit down, get it done, get it sorted. Now, keep in mind that that one day and, and you see that the question mark disappeared as soon as I did that. Um, that one day actually is representative of eight hours of work because our calendar has one day equal to eight hours of work. So that's fine. Now I could have put it in here as say four hours and that's not a problem. You see it shows up as half a day uh, or we could do eight hours and that will be interpreted as one day in the summary task. I could also do it in weeks, you know, one week. And you see how the project changes. And of course now it's the longest activity. So all the other ones are no longer critical. So we're seeing some of that uh, information being displayed automatically, but let's ignore that for now. Um, the one, you know, and you can do months as well, but uh, it's kind of silly at this point in time. So the one thing I did want to show is sometimes this is interpreting work days. But if you, some activities just take up uh, um, 
uh, elapsed days, which is to say continual days, including non-working days, so over the weekend. So for example, if you were putting in an activity to cure, wait for concrete to cure, for example, uh, you could say that you want to have three elapsed days, and we just put an E in front of the days, and you see here that it's going over the weekend. It's including the weekend in those elapsed days. Uh, so, so just, you know, so many different options. We're going to go back. We're going to make that one day. Now, you know, really it's up to you as to whether, you know, what's the detail that you're, you're looking for? Are you really going to start a new task? three quarters of the way through a day, well, you know, six out of eight hours completed. Well, it depends on the nature of the project, depends on the nature of the tasks. And so you're going to have to choose whether you're working in round days or hours and everything else. But behind the scenes, Microsoft Project is always working in hours. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm just going to run down here and I'm going to put in some times. Uh, for this. Now keep in mind this is just an example project. I'm not even going to pretend that this is complete. Uh, it, it's as complete as it needs to be for us to, to go through uh, a, a sample project. So demolish the existing bathroom. Let's say that's going to take a day. Oh. Oh. And days is the default. Now I get down to uh, utilities inspection and depending on, I mean, I'm just going to use it as an example of a milestone. Uh, now I'm not going to pretend that the inspections don't take time. They, they, they do take time, but this is a very, very small project and uh, you know, you can probably have your inspectors and all that in within an hour or two hours to, to get everything done. And so you might not want to attribute a day to it and you may not want to attribute even a couple hours. We might want to just track it as a milestone. Now what a milestone is, it's a zero activity task. So if I put in zero there and you see it shows up as this diamond, of course we can change that in, in our settings, but uh, it's a good one, well-recognized uh, symbol. And, and so the milestone just occurs at a particular per period of time and they're used throughout the projects to show you know passage between phases and everything else so we can set up our, our milestone. So we're gonna use that just to demonstrate a milestone here and we'll put a milestone down here under complete to say, yep, we, we hit the milestone. Uh, and let's uh, finish this off. Uh, drywall, three days. There we go. I think we've put in the values. And just one thing to, to watch is you see how these are rolling up. So complete includes these two tasks and the total sum of the days going in here is one day. Now, uh, if we look up here, rough construction, it has a total sum of three days, but that's not really the sum of all of these tasks, but that's because according to the schedule right now, they're happening at the same time. They're happening in parallel. Uh, and so what the three days is, is the longest path to get all of those tasks done. And it rolls that up here. And so we see that our project duration in that summary task up at the top, which we have turned on, is also three days. Now, once we give order and precedence to these tasks, that's all going to change. So the, the last thing I want to do before wrapping up or wrapping up this uh, little tutorial is to show you detailed information. So this these tasks uh, are going to have a whole lot more detailed information for each of the tasks and, and they're contained within that database. And there's a number of different ways that we can access that information or edit that information. And there's a couple that are more useful than others and depending on what you do, we'll see different ways as we go along. But I wanted to introduce you to a couple. So the first one is if I double click on a task, I get the ta task information dialog box. Now I, I can't change to a different task directly. I would have to close the box and open up a different dialog box. Uh, and you see there's a number of different tabs with different bits of information. And so we see the information that we entered into the entry sheet coming forward. It's stud walls and the duration is two days. Uh, it's auto scheduled. And based on that auto scheduling, it's given it a start and a finish date. 
and we don't we haven't put any precedents in or predecessors uh, we haven't just signed any resources or, or anything else uh, there's no notes associated with it but this is where all that information is going to be collected as we start to add that information so i'm going to close that and show you okay so if i go to the task tab and i hit details it's going to give me a you know split the screen uh, you know, so there's a top half and a bottom half. And in the bottom half, it's going to show me the details of whatever is selected. And in this case, it is the task information. Now, see, we have stud walls, two days, uh, and some information. Now, if I right click over here, we can change the information. So we have predecessors and successors uh, showing right now. We can do resources and, and assign resources to it. Um, we, we can look at the work assigned to it, and this is going to be useful when it comes time to doing overtime and, and everything else. And the really nice thing about this particular view is as I change tasks up here, it simply provides the information for the task that's selected down below. And so it becomes one of the preferred methods, I would think, to add detailed information about the various tasks as we're going through. Like I say, there's a number of different ways. Um, you know, if not used for entering uh, task information, because we can do that in so many other views, it certainly is great for reviewing task information. So with that, I, I think we're going to call this quits. Let me turn off uh, our detailed view. So let me save this. I'm just, and so it's ready to open for the next one. Uh, come back for the next one. What we're going to do is we're going to spend some time talking about the uh, precedents or the predecessors as they call it in Microsoft Project those causal dependencies and that's going to help actually derive our schedule in a way that is actually meaningful to us so come on back for that and uh, we'll be happy to see you then